I suffer from chronic post nut clarity. Oh. Oh. It's 24 7, all hours of the day. Oh. 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 Disgusting. I don't even feel an orgasm, it's only the afterthought. Oh. 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 I don't even like her. If you're a guy, and only if you're a guy, you know what that means. Hey everybody, my name's Anthony Rissanello, and you are what? What? Why? I'm a social and relationship coach. I live in Los Angeles. I've been doing this for 15 plus years. I teach people how to get into the relationships that they really want to be in. Today, we're going to react to some TikTok dating videos, okay? And then you're gonna hopefully take something from it, whether it's a smile on your face <laughs> or a lesson in your heart. Ah, uh, well. That even made me feel nice and warm on the inside. But before I do, I wanna talk about my new membership, which you could access down in the link in the description. Each month, I choose one of my members to choose what reaction video I should do next. I also give my members access to a group video chat in my Discord where you could interact with me or you could just interact with each other at all times, make friends, connect with like-minded individuals. It also gives you discounts on my merch and my upcoming courses, but most of all, you get to support the channel in enabling me to make better videos and spread the message across all of YouTube. I would ultimately love to do about 14, 15, 16, 17 videos a week, but I can't do it because I don't personally have time to edit all those videos, but I would love to hire a full-time editor. Your contribution into the membership will go directly towards that. So if you're interested in helping out the channel along with getting a lot of benefits, click the link in the description. And if you've taken anything from my channel, if, if I've affected your life in any way, I would really, really, really love it, guys. Thank you so much. Let's get to the dating TikToks. Upside down. Um, and if you guys have seen my Timothy Chalamet video, which I'm linking right above here, you'll know that I mentioned, if you're gonna invest in something, if you're gonna invest in your life, that is something that is like more, more like looks focused, definitely invest in a really good haircut. And I talked about investing in a haircut that cost about $100. And a lot of the comments were like, oh, what are you crazy, $100? But listen, a good haircut will literally change your face. Literally change your face. Now I don't talk a lot about the superficial stuff on this channel because that stuff's easy. You know, wearing nicer clothes, all that stuff. Wearing clothes that you enjoy, that you truly are excited about wearing. That stuff's easy. I like talking about the nitty gritty of social skills and relationship skills, but something as plain as this, come on brah, come on brah. Okay, next. Somebody please tell me why it is okay for men to sleep with as The answer, and you're going to hate this, is evolution. I know you wanted to hear something else. The biggest and fastest example I can give you in 60 seconds is a peacock's tail. A male peacock has ridiculously colorful plumage and this big ass tail that he has to spend enormous energy re reserves to grow. It makes him easier to hunt and easier to kill. But he has to grow that tail in order to be selected for. Being selected for is more important than staying alive. Whether you like it or not, Human males and human females are different. They are not the same. And both evolutionarily and legally, the selection criteria falls on the female. Men don't get to indiscriminately select whatever women they want to sleep with. Women do. Otherwise, it's called rape. So when you, as a female, sleep with bunches of male, what you're demonstrating is an inability to sexually select. You're not following the evolutionary paradigm of sexual selection. You're being an indiscriminate selector. Ergo, you are worth less evolutionarily. This is the type of shit that like red pill guys that dislike women read about and learn about to hopefully make them feel better about themselves. Just looking at this guy right here, he doesn't look like the type of guy that's very happy in his relationships. Doesn't look like the type of guy that was very successful in his past. Um, 
and they have to come up and pull up these weird like evolution oh evolution you're not gonna like it but i'm a fucking scientist here and i could tell you about evolutionary women when you have sex with men that means you're a slut and you have low value because you don't have good discernment in who you're choosing but when men do blah 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 here's the thing women especially Fuck this guy because he's wrong. Oh, there are so many instances where a woman has slept with whoever they wanted. And guess what? You could still be discriminate in sleeping with who you want. If you have sex with a lot of different people, that does not mean that you are indiscriminate. That does not mean that you're not discerning. Wh where do those two things connect? There's so many holes in what he's saying, and we could pick it apart so, so much, but I'm gonna tell you right now that when you tear down these rules where women, if they have sex with a lot of different people and they're indiscriminate about it, that means that they're less attractive and valuable. Even if it was true back then, it is much different now. There are billions of people. If we are going by what he's saying, because there are so, 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 so many more people, there's so many more options for us to choose from. So to be more discriminant would be about trying out more people. Wouldn't that make sense? But anyway, the point is, don't even try to argue with people like this because all they're trying to do is just to shut you up, is to make you feel held back. And they're trying to do that because they're angry at you. So don't ever try to argue with somebody that already has a bias. If you're gonna de debate with anybody, debate with somebody that has zero bias in the matter, okay? I guarantee you that you choosing to have sex with who you want to in any way that you want to has zero effect on who you end up with. And if you date somebody that does judge you about your sex life in the past negatively, you are not with the right person. You know what? Let's throw them out of evolution. Anybody that judges anybody about their past sex life, literally just kick them the fuck out of your options for who you want to be with. Throw them out of this evolutionary progress that we're trying to make here. Anyway, I can go on forever, but one thing is I promise you, you're never gonna have problems with finding the right partner based on who you have had sex with in the past. The biggest differences between men and women in the world in terms of temperament and interest are in Scandinavia, and they've maximized as a consequence of the, your egalitarian policies. Well, what do you mean by that? It means that the more egalitarian your state, the bigger the personality differences between men and women. That's like the... It's the How do you measure that? How do you know that? Oh, well, psychologists have perfected at least to some degree, the measure of personality over the last 30 years with very advanced statistical models. And so what you do is you offer men and women well-validated tests of preference and of personality. And you do that all across the world with tens of thousands of people in multi-country samples. And then you look at the difference between men and women. And then you rank order that by wealth and egalitarian social policy. And what you find is the more egalitarian the society, the more different the men and women become. Okay, so what this guy is saying is that in a certain area of the world that has made the laws equal for all genders, they have found the biggest differences in genders simple, right? So what he basically said is when the law is completely equal between men and women, for instance, that shows the biggest difference in personalities statistically between men and women. Now, Jordan Peterson does have bias. Why? Because so much of what he talks about uh, is focused on showing that women are one way and men are a different way. But what he's not considering is the fact that this is not some isolated area of the world that has no connection whatsoever to other parts of the world, right? So that's already one variable 
that they can't control unless they literally shut a society off from the world without knowing any other part of the world's culture, right? And then watch them grow over the course of many years to see if that still stays true. That's impossible to do. Now, egalitarian policies does not mean culture, right? So their society's culture. So what if Scandinavian countries or whatever he's saying, what if the culture there is sexist? I'm not saying it is, but what if it is sexist in certain areas there? Does that mean that the policies match the culture? That also doesn't take away years and years of tradition that they may have had. What if tradition has brought them to say that women should be doing this and men should be doing this? There are so many variables that we have not taken into consideration. To make just a statement like that is something that you could use in a debate to hold a case when you really haven't dived in enough to really look at it. Now, I do acknowledge, obviously, that testosterone drives certain feelings and estrogen will drive certain other feelings more strongly. However, in my experiences, I have not really found men to be more of this and women to be more of that in my life, truly. If anything, I have found more women in my life that I've met and seen to hold more traditionally masculine traits than men. And conversely, the same too. I've seen more men hold more traditionally feminine traits than women. I just have, if anything, but it's generally really just equally spread out. But I do see conservative personalities really working as hard as they can to try to make men act a certain way and women act a certain way. This is the number one thing I am sure about. This is the number, number, number one thing I'm sure about. Following gender roles has zero, zero effect on your ability to have good relationships with the people that you want in your life. Zero effect. Keep that in mind. So again, what another jabroni wants to do just because he is a conservative and he wants to show that men are this way and women are that way, I don't give a shit. All I know is that in terms of getting into the relationships that you want to be in, your gender roles have no effect on that. Okay? Moving on. I may be a bee in this beehive of a city. Statue of Liberty! However, you can't compare me to any others that are free. Wolf! 100! The most promising man you could not wait to eyeball! Could you be that girl I'm seeking? Could you be special just like me, shooting star wings, swiping right to take a chance is key to see if you and me are meant to wasp. <laughs> that was an awesome video, but I mean, it's funny if it's sarcastic, if he actually thinks this is like something that is cool and charming, it's kind of gross. Anyway, let's move on. Do I look at you or the camera? My name is Richard Puny. I suffer from chronic post not clarity. Oh, oh, oh. It's 24 7, all hours of the day. Oh, oh, oh. Disgusting. I don't even feel an orgasm, it's only the afterthought. Oh, oh, oh. I don't even like her. If you're a guy, and only if you're a guy, you know what that means. Imagine if guys. Yay were hit on the same way that girls are hit on like imagine like you're a guy at a at a bar and a girl comes up and is just like damn bro shit i saw your package from all the way across the bar god damn that bull really? man shit look at them arms them shits are vascular look at them faint mm. I, I don't even wait can is I this a prank you, can i buy you a drink shit dude I'm gonna I'm treat you right. I'm gonna treat you Are right. You Let me cook for you. Let me clean for you. 
Make Here's it your laundry, bitch. Yes. Bring that ass over here. <laughs> Those like, what? The point that she is actually making is that when men do go up to women and do that, they are not doing it because they're actually interested in getting to know the person, connecting, having chemistry, feeling that attraction between two people. What they're really trying to do is trying to attain a thing. That's what objectifying is, right? Literally seeing a person as an object and treating them as such, kind of like um, a goal, a, a prize to win, not an actual person, a human. That is what women are disgusted by. That is something that men hardly ever feel in this society. Um, straight men is what I mean, because that's just not the way, you know, society taught us to be. If men did feel like that, if straight men did go into bars and were treated by women like that, they actually guaranteed would be turned off by it. Because what we're not thinking about is the objectification in there. Now, if women did feel that there was no objectification when men would approach and say that stuff, and the guy actually was really interested in connecting with the person, getting to know them, building attraction between each other, then that's a different story. The name's George, this is my girlfriend, Rebecca. Oh wow, my girlfriend, like you own her? That's a fun way to introduce someone. <laughs> that's not what he meant, but it's cool that you'd assume that if I did have a problem, I wouldn't stand up for myself. Yeah, well, Dan's a great clarifier, so I'm glad we got that cleared Nothing up. Nothing to clear up. There was something to clear up, and I did. Yeah, like on a date or something? You need to play little adventures now that you're married, and like. The passion is gone. That's cool. No, we were just hungry and wanted to try this restaurant because we like trying new things together. Oh, so you need each other to try new things because you're afraid to do things alone. Oh wow, so you think my wife should stay at home? Oh, you think she belongs at home? Cool. Uh, I didn't say that. You said that. You said it. You said that. You said it. You said that. You said it. You said that. You said that is not what I meant at all. Now, what about you guys? Have you been together long? Probably not, right? You don't. This is exactly what I think everyone is afraid of. I hate the overly PC world that we are in right now. And I think this is the example of what it feels like to be in this society. That being said, I think there's a reason for everything. And it's, it's a sticky subject, right? Because we can't get mad at people for getting offended about things that we're trying to change in society. But at the same time, I do think people sometimes or often fake feeling offended as a way to virtue signal. And what is virtue signaling? It's basically saying, I'm showing you how politically correct I am. That is different than actually being offended. That is, I think, what this video is really showing. It's showing people who like to virtue signal. I just got one question. Why can't friends just kiss each other? Like, why can we not just like, just, or like full on make out? Like, fuck it. Like, cause everybody <laughs> wants a kiss, you know? I think that's a great TikTok. And I think the whole best friends kissing TikToks trend is a great one because it shows that there really should be no disconnect between men and women who are best friends and to people that are dating or that are hooking up or to people that aren't dating and just want to kiss each other. I think the fact that intimacy is such a taboo thing in society is actually what makes it worse for relationships and is actually what makes men more aggressive. Um, I actually believe men would be less aggressive if men did not create such taboo on sex, feeling open to express their attraction in others and then take action on it when two people are actually feeling. I've talked about this a lot in my past videos and I'll probably talk about it more, but let's move on. I don't know, you just, you're not like other girls, you know? You're different. How? Like, how am I different? Fuck. <laughs> Other girls did not ask that. Oh, uh, it's so true. This is the kind of bullshit that guys think that women are gonna be into. Oh, I'm different. But the second you just peek under, peek under, you know, just go one layer deeper, you see that, yes, they aren't actually interested in you. I'm, I'm just saying a certain set of men, a certain kind of guys that are doing this. 
They're not actually interested. They don't actually think that they're different. They're just trying to do things in order to win a person or win a thing, achieve something, feeling like I have gotten my prize. So yes, women, challenge men when they do this stuff to you because it will separate the men who are truly objectifying you with the ones that are truly interested because if they have a real answer underneath, that's a hint that they actually do see something in you. All right, I'm just gonna say this because I am a tiny woman and I can confirm that if I hold my tiny hand up against your big man hand and I say some shit along the lines of, it's so much bigger than mine, uh, we are having intercourse that day. <laughs> All right, well, men, you now know the answer. Listen, he's cute, look. Mom, stop. Stop. Mom! <laughs> stop! Stop! Go! Stop! I can't. Mom! Oh my lord. You freaking. I have to sit here now. <laughs> if I ever become a parent, which I don't think I will, that's gonna be fun to do. <laughs> How about, guys, we end it with a really, really special TikTok? <laughs> <laughs> I thank my beautiful girlfriend for filming that, and I thank uh, me for directing and producing that film. And I will call it a film because, aside from regular TikToks, it really uh, is it's just a step higher, a level above what you would usually see, the type of creativity you would see in a normal TikTok. Uh, that to me is magic because you're in the perfect spot. And when you have that opportunity to, to expose somebody for the douchebaggery that they uh, express in public places, uh, it's just magic. Thanks so much for watching everybody. If you want to join the membership and choose what uh, future videos I react to, click the link in the description. If you ever wanted to do a group video chat with me, click the link in the description. If you liked this video, let's get it to 5,000 likes and I will do a part, holy crap, part four of my TikTok series. I think there's a lot to learn in here and there's a lot of laughs to be had. If you want to watch my second TikTok video that didn't get a lot of views at all, but I think was better than the first TikTok video, much, much better, click here.